Audition CS6 has some really nice features for adjusting playback speed inside a multi-track session. And let's take a quick look at how this works. First of all, I've got a really simple session here with four bits of audio. And if I play this back so you can get a, a sense of what normal playback speed is. In fact, if I get a bit of the drums here. Now you'll notice that at the top right hand corner of each of these clip segments, there's a little white triangle. This uh, volume option here is a menu, but just down from that, I've got a stretch option. And if I click and drag with that particular triangle, I'm going to adjust the playback speed. Over in the properties panel, if I collapse our basic settings and just scroll down a little bit so you can see the stretch settings at the bottom, you can see I've now made an adjustment to drop this to 55.6% of the original duration. And you'll also notice that the stretch mode has automatically jumped to real time. If I select another clip here, you'll see the mode is off. And in fact, I can toggle the mode back to off again, and this clip will go back to its original duration if I want. Now, one of the nice things about this stretching feature is you can apply an adjustment to multiple clips at the same time. So if I select all of these, I'm just dragging across them with this move tool, I can now click on any one of these and you can see I get a little stopwatch icon when I'm hovering over this triangle and I can click and drag and maybe I'll bring this back to about 75% and now let's play this again. So everything stays in sync. Now notice that the tone didn't change when I adjusted the speed. Audition is automatically compensating for effectively the, the reduction in the space between the samples, which would normally produce a pitch shift. But if I expand out these stretch controls again, and remember I've got all of these clips selected here, you'll notice that, okay, I've got a real-time mode, which is what I'm using now, and this is a reasonably powerful computer, so it should be okay. I'll come to the rendered mode in a moment. We've also got this option of choosing monophonic and polyphonic type. Now, essentially this means how hard do you want Audition to try? If you're working with complex audio with multiple voices, then you may find you get a better result when you choose the polyphonic option. To be honest, it doesn't take that long to switch between the two modes, and regardless of the audio type, I'd be inclined to try both and have a listen. You never know until you try it with your actual audio sources. Notice also though that I have this vary speed option. And if I choose vary speed, see how the semitones adjust here under the pitch setting. So I can manually define a duration. If I'm working on an hours, minutes, seconds, and frames duration, I can specify it in time. Here I'm doing bars and beats, or I can specify a percentage. And here now, because I'm in vary speed mode, Audition is going to change the pitch. So if I play this again, So all that's happening here is Audition is removing that compensation for the adjustment to the samples. If I switch this back to polyphonic, you can see I'm back to zero semitones. The same playback speed, but it's the original tonality. Now, as I say, I'm working on a reasonably powerful computer here, and this is playing back absolutely fine. But if you are working on a less powerful machine, perhaps you're working on a laptop, you might want to switch to the rendered version, and this is a high-quality version. As soon as I do that, you'll notice that over each of the clips, I'm getting this time-remaining counter. And I can carry on working and doing other things in my session. I don't have to wait for this to finish applying the effect but Audition is now doing a very, very careful adjustment to the playback speed, and it's not going to worry about whether it can play back in real time. When it's finished, it's going to create a file which is cached, it's stored with all the other cached media files associated with the session, and it'll just play back like any other piece of media. And you'll notice that at the bottom here, under the, the advanced settings, and you may have this collapse, so you just click on the disclosure triangle to reveal it. I've got the option to choose high, medium, and low precision. Frankly, I can't think of a situation where you would want to choose anything other than high quality. If you were, you might as well choose the real-time mode. And you'll notice also that we've got different controls for transient sensitivity and window size. Now, this 
is a setting that you probably won't need to adjust these to. They're to do with how much of the audio Audition is going to analyze when it's calculating the effect and also how sensitive it's going to be to adjustments in tonality, uh, adjustments in the samples. At the moment, 40% is absolutely fine. If you're working with very complex music with subtle transients between notes, maybe a string orchestra, something like that, you might want to play with these and see if you can get a better result. There we go, that's done. And let's have another listen. So there you have it. That's working with the new stretch controls in Adobe Audition CS6.